Hey, network admins, managing your network in the cloud is really easy now. Manage multiple sites in a dashboard with centralized configuration, WAN load balancing, and VPN through SD-WAN with the ESG 510 from Ingenious. Let's see how this stacks up. Now I'm going to unbox the ESG 510 and also walk through some of the configurations and talk about some of the benefits for a network administrator that needs to deploy quickly without any of the complexity. So let's see what's in the box. Now the box comes with a quick start guide. Once you open the box, which is just a power supply. So you've got your console cable and a power supply. Then you've got some little feet here if you wanna place that on a desk. The firewall sits nicely in there with some styrofoam. That's all that's in the box is just the ESG 510, the ingenious ESG 510 with the power supply, a console cable, and uh, some screws if you wanna mount it on the wall and some rubber feet if you wanna mount it on the desk. Now you can see the different ports here on the firewall. You have two WAN ports because you can do WAN load balancing with ISPs. Then you also have two additional ports. One port is PoE plus capable for an access point and these ports are 2.5 gigabit per second ports. You've got your console, and if you wanted to do uh, a cellular backhaul, you can do that through this, um, this USB dongle port. There are two ways you can add the security gateway to the Ingenious Cloud dashboard. You can use their mobile app here on the phone and scan a QR code. It's a very convenient and easy method to do it. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use the web browser. And in, in the cloud dashboard, I'm already logged in. I'm actually going to go down to the bottom left and click on the inventory and license. From here, we can click on register device over on the top right. And here is where you can scan the QR code, right? You can use the app but I will manually enter the serial number of my security gateway. And the, the serial number is right underneath the security gateway, or you can see it on the outside of the box. You can add multiple security gateways this way. You just do one serial number per row. And when you're ready, you go ahead and click on register. There we go. We have successfully registered the security gateway to our cloud dashboard. Now, once the gateway or your gateways are in your inventory, you can assign a license, which is a professional license. And that professional license can give you uh, additional uh, insights and access and, and different um, features of the security gateway. You can assign that license to the security gateway here in the inventory dashboard. Once you've got your security gateways in your inventory, you then need to assign them to a network. Here at the bottom of my inventory, you can see the gateway that I just added with that serial number that ends in K9R. I'm actually going to select that security gateway and over at the top right section, I'm going to assign it to a network. Now I know I want to assign it to a specific network that I have here called SAN for, for San Diego. It's an airport code and I will hit apply. So now that I've assigned the ESG 510 to a network, we can begin the configuration. Now, if you've already set up your networks within the dashboard, those configurations that you've already done will just get pushed to the security gateway. That is one of the big benefits of the security gateway is this zero touch provisioning. Because you've already set those configurations in the dashboard, you're going to be able to just push that over from the cloud to the security gateway itself. Um, now, the WAN port on its own, by default, of the security gateway is set up for DHCP. So once you've con connected that WAN port to the network or to your uh, ISP and it takes DHCP, it'll automatically connect to the internet and be able to phone home to the Ingenious dashboard and be able to grab that configuration. Here on the top left, you see that hamburger icon. I'm gonna click on that, expand my folder, my hierarchy that I have organized for my networks and click on SAN or double click. 
from here we can see the devices, right? So I'll go under the left here because we're still under the inventory mode. On the left, I'll just go ahead and click on the man, hover over manage and click on dashboard just to see if every what everything looks like. So for this network, I really only have the security gateway and you can see that there's one there and it's green and it looks like it's online. If I click on that, you can get uh, just some very basic details of what that security gateway looks like. If we hover over the gear icon and go to configure and gateway, we can look at the interfaces. Now this is the WAN interface, which I only have WAN 1 connected. There is a WAN 2 port that I mentioned earlier, which you can connect another ISP if you wanted to and set its bandwidth and also set that as DHCP. So for now, I'm going to set it as DHCP. But if you did need to configure a static IP configuration, you can just do that under the connection and where you see DHCP on the dropdown, select static IP and, and set up your static IP configuration there. For now, I'm going to leave it at DHCP and I'm going to leave DNS server from ISP. You could specify your own DNS servers or even use the Google public DNS servers. Now, I don't have any VLAN ID assigned to this WAN interface, so I'm going to keep it as it is. The ISP bandwidth here, this is just taking the, the port speed, but if it was, say, uh, one gig, uh, you can just say one 1024 megabits per second. That's my ISP bandwidth. So these settings by default here that, ha that you already see are going to be sent to the security gateway. So I can hit apply here because I did change the ISP bandwidth. And when you are changing the configuration of your security gateway, especially the WAN ports, you want to be cautious because you could lose that connectivity to the cloud. And so plan accordingly. So I'll just hit yes. Now, if you're using two WANs, you'll have that WAN failover. It's it's pretty dynamic here for the security gateway, a very nice feature to have, especially when uh, you need at least that redundant connection. All right. So down below here, you can see a dual WAN preference. You can set which WAN you want to have as your primary and how you want that failover to, to be set, or maybe you want it to load balance. And so by default, it's setting to load balance, but if you wanna be deterministic, you can say, hey, I only want this to fail over if WAN 1 has a failure, and you can hit apply. Now to build out your, your internal network, you're gonna to wanna to click on the LAN tab. Here you can modify your LAN interfaces. For small businesses, there probably won't be much in terms of different LAN configurations you might have. You can assign a network to the interface of your security gateway. We have three other ports I can actively use at the moment but different networks can be trunked to that one interface. So you wanna be sure you assign a VLAN to these networks. And if we look at the default LAN configuration, it's set up as a bridge, and this is the IP address, which is the gateway for this, and which ports it is active on. So right now, I'm only active on P1 and P2, which are those two rightmost ports. For this specific network, you can go through the DHCP setting, set up a DHCP server and what your scope is going to be, and I have different settings such as bandwidth limit, splash pages, and whatnot. Now I'm going to add a separate network or, or interface here, and I'm just going to call it guest, right? And this is a VLAN type of interface, and I'm going to keep it simple with the 172.16.1.1 slash 24 network. I'm going to give this the VLAN ID of this guest network here. This is these are networks that I've already or VLANs I've already configured, so they're already pushed down to the security gateway. And I'll say I'll make that active on P1. So right now we've got two networks. We've got this LAN bridge network here on P1, and another VLAN uh, interface for guests 
Now, let's say I want to add a Wi-Fi network for my internal users. I'll click on Add Interface again. I'll call this uh, Internal Wi-Fi. And I will also give this a different IP address. That's going to be the gateway uh, slash 24. And we'll put it on VLAN 11. Actually, I'll, I'll make this a little bit neater. I'll say 11.1, and I'll assign that to P1 as well. Now that we have a few networks configured on the security gateway, I'd like to add a rule for that guest network so that it cannot reach the internal network or even the internal Wi-Fi network. And so I'll do that under the settings uh, configure section, and we'll go to gateway and then firewall. You can see there's a, any any rule here. I will add a rule on the top right. We'll say um, any protocol will deny from, from this CIDR to 192.168.11.0 slash 24. The description is block guest to internal Wi-Fi and hit done so that adds it to the top there because it's a it's a specific rule and i'll add one more so any protocol will deny from the guest uh, subnet also to that lan network and so that's block guest to lan and hit done and there you go so that should be all we need to at least block the, the guest traffic from hitting anything internal. So now the next thing that I wanna do is just to test the connectivity of the ESG 510. I have an ingenious ECW336 that I'll just connect directly to port one of the security gateway and get an SSID for the internal LAN and also a guest SSID configured. I'll connect two devices, one to each of those WLANs, just to see if they have internet and also to see if the guest network can connect to the internal network at all. Okay, before we test everything, I just wanted to show that I got my AP connected or assigned to this network. It's not online yet, but once it is, it will get the settings that I have configured under SSID. I have two SSIDs called uh, testnet and the other one's guestnet on their respective VLANs. Now, I think I made an error in configuring the firewall because once I configured the two rules, I forgot to hit apply on the top right. So once you uh, move out of this page, those settings aren't applied. So you gotta remember to hit apply at the top right. And I just made sure that the destination subnets matched with what I wanted. So once we see that access point come online, we should be able to connect to those networks device and be able to test internet and connectivity between those two subnets. All right, I've got the devices connected. I've got my Samsung connected to the guest net, which has the correct IP of 172.16.1.2. And also the iPhone is also on the right network. It's on 192.168.11.2. The thing that I want to check is being able to ping the internet, for example. Can I ping, say, google.com? And you can see I can successfully do that. But also from the Android device, which is on our guest network, can that get out to the internet as well? There you go, doing a speed ping there and it's able to do a hundred with with no loss and the other network i want to test is being able to ping the gateway of or even the device on the other network we want to be able to see if that blocks any access to the internal network from the guest network what i'm going to do is use network tools to ping the iphone that's on the internal network the 192.168.11.2 address and if i do that we can see that it is actually getting a loss there. So that means the firewall rule that we've 
implemented is working correctly. So in summary, the ESG 510 is an affordable small business SD-WAN security gateway. It has a two and a half gig port capability, dual WAN support, and that means a small business can get two internet connections with high speed bandwidth, and be able to have redundant connections. Uh, the simplicity and the load balancing and even failover, what you may want to see is additional insights on what's happening on the network. You have some basic insights, but maybe you want application level insights, uh, something that we may look into when it comes to the uh, professional level licensing. Because if you want to have those insights, then that would be useful as a network administrator. But in many small businesses, that value just might not be there, right? You just want to have that simple connect connectivity, have some security in place, and have that redundancy. And also be able to do some SD-WAN, uh, SD-WAN capabilities of setting up VPN automatically. And so that's what this uh, ESG 510 can do from Ingenious. And, and really the big benefit here is that in, an administrator doesn't have to do a lot of manual configuration via command line interface of the, of the gateway. You can really leverage the zero touch provisioning and be able to roll out these devices to your remote offices without having to travel on site. So uh, I want to thank you for, for watching this video. If you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. Thank you.